Rock and Roll Geek Show 694. Still rocking after all these years. This is the story of my rock and roll butler. This is it, the show that started it all. Often imitated, but never equal. From San Francisco, USA, online since 2004, is the one and only Rock and Roll Geek Show. With the original Rock and Roll Geek, Michael Butler. Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Wednesday, April 27, 2016, and tonight I am going to play for you an interview that I did on Sunday. On Sunday afternoon, I talked to my good friend Sven Spacebrain from a band called Torpedo Head. If you listen to the Rock and Roll Geek Show, you've heard Torpedo Head many times. They have a new album that's coming out this week, and it is called Three. And... Sven and I sat down and I called him in Germany, in Frankfurt, Germany, and we did a track by track of his new album called Three. I'm not going to tell you, my, we did the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system. I'm not going to tell you if I liked it or not, but uh, you will find out if you listen to this. Thank you so much for listening, friends. I'm just going to get right into it. I'm not going to um, say the names of the donors tonight, but uh, I will. Pr- I promise I will next week. Please keep the donations coming, friends. Your donations keep this show alive. Without your donations, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled, dog-shit-smelling death. All right? Okay. So, without further ado, here is my good friend, Sven Spacebrain, and me talking about their new album called three it's out this week and if you like it i will put a link um, to their website and stuff it should be out by the time you download this episode or listen to this episode it should be available for you to de- for you to uh go purchase and if you like it please support them because they need the money and they're an independent unsigned artist and unsigned independent artists need your support friends all right here's Sven Space Brain from Torpedo Head. Hey, Sven, how's it going? Or wait a second, are you Sven or Space Brain now? Are you officially known as Space Brain? Because on the uh, on the liner notes of this record, it's you're listed as Space Brain, vocals and guitar. So should I call you Sven or Space Brain? You can still call me Sven. I, okay. I just put that on just like that. Okay, is that more a rock, more of a rock and roll uh, name? <laughs> well, the other no. guys are known as one name too, Holger and Zach. Yeah, Zash, <laughs> Zash. How do you say his name, Zash, the the drummer? In German, all you say is Zash. Zash. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then Holger, it, all German dudes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> where are you? You where, what part of Germany are you from again? You Munich? No. Oh no no in uh, Frankfurt. Frankfurt. That's right. The people who don't know, American Heartbreak played with uh, the Space Brains. In, in was it in Frankfurt? Um, no, that was in uh, what was that? Bo- Bochum, Bochum. Oh, Bochum. Okay, I don't know any of the. T- I can't tell one. G- I don't know one German town from another. The only thing I know is the Hanover. Is it Hanover or Hamburg? Which one has the red light district? That's Hamburg. Hamburg. Yeah, I like that. That's a cool town. <laughs> <laughs> At least that neighborhood was fun to hang out in, to walk through That's as a, a tourist. One of the uh, uh, few really rock and roll towns in Germany, like Hamburg and, and Berlin and yeah, a few other places. But that's where, like, there's something going on, really, in the city. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, Berlin had Wild at Heart. You guys played there yeah. all the time, right? Is that place still yeah. going? Yeah, I think so. We we haven't played there for for quite some years now, but um, I I think it's still going. Yeah. yeah. So the new album is called Three, right? Or is it one? I I I. I'm guessing it's three. Three. Yeah. This is the third Space Brain or third uh, Torpedo Head album. I keep wanting to call it a Space Brain because uh, your old band was the Space Brains. Which was a great yeah. band. That's how I met Sven, for people who don't know. I met Sven when he was in the Space Brains, when I was in American Heartbreak. And we've been, uh, I guess you can say friends, right? Ever since? So, for, for another decade now, for 10 years. <laughs> yeah, there you go. At least we're not enemies. Let's put it that way. We're not enemies. We don't hate each other. No, <laughs> I don't think so. So how is, how is the band going? Have you guys changed members 
Yeah, we have uh, had a little uh, changing in the members uh, three to two, two to three years ago um, because things didn't work out. And yeah, it, at at one time period, it was only me and the drummer. And um, before looking for some someone new, we just started to to demo songs again. So we met each Friday and. Yeah, we, we recorded some new songs, and yeah, that whole process led to the new album. So, who? So the the members of on this album are they the same or different than the members on the last album? It's a uh, different bass player. Different bass player. So same. same what drummer. was the problem with the ba- the last bass player? Was he just what couldn't commit, or was he a dork, or what happened with him? Not nah, it didn't really work. Uh, you know the the problem is when you're a, a, a trio, it's always a bit different than than a band where, where you have four or five members. You know, and trio in the trio you have just to have, you have to have that kind of special chemistry to get along on yeah, the the first thing. You know when you drive into the gigs and everything. With only and, three, why is it why is it harder with three than it is with four or five? Because it's you know when 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 there's something something not not good or, or I don't know you can always you know split up it's like two and two oh, and oh okay that makes sense yeah okay yeah, yeah it works better with then with three with three it's always I don't know one if 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 you don't have that that chemistry where it just works you know and it, it worked for some time but yeah it, it didn't work out anymore and. We just had to go uh, separate ways. So if there are, so if um, if you have four or five people in the band, you can play with people you don't really like. But if you have three, you have to be, you have to all like each other a lot. I think so. Yeah, because all you know, with the traveling in a bus and where you're really close together for hours and hours and th- things like that, and with the more people of that doesn't mean that that you don't have any problems when you have more people in the band <laughs> i think you know know what i'm talking yeah. about it's also still, in a three piece though it's a little bit harder because the bass player has to has to kind of take up the rhythm guitar part when you do a solo yeah that that oh, that's the the musical standpoint yeah yeah so but, yeah but that's the, that's that's uh, the the side when you're on stage and when you're playing that's Anyway, that's that's a, a whole different world because, like, I'm I'm the lead singer and the lead guitarist, and so do you have no desire to get a rhythm guitar player or, or a second guitarist? Mm, I was just g- going to come to that point because after we we uh, split up, it was only the two of us, and um, yeah, then then we tried for for a short period. We we tried to have two more people in the band because we thought maybe it works better, and also with the second guitar and. It was cool. It was was fun for a while, but yeah. Also, that that version really didn't didn't work. Also, from from a musical standpoint of view, because I've been playing uh, uh, in, in trios like my since my first band. Besides the time when we had the Space Brains, where we had two guitars, but yeah, I've been you know I'm the kind of singer songwriter and. Yeah, also with it doesn't really work for me with a with a second guitar player. It's cool, you know, to have something some the sound filling up, but I write my songs and everything it's based or uh, around one one guitar. Yeah, and guitar players like to be uh they like to get their songs in there, right? Hey, I got a new riff. How come we're not using my riff? Yeah. And that, you want to be the guy pro- who writes all the riffs. Yeah, it it would only work if if the second guitar player would be someone you know who, who plays really really good guitar, and knew you were like, the boss. Yeah, I I, I don't <laughs> want to play this. I want to play that solo. You can have that, and yeah. no problem. <laughs> I every, and find me a very good guitar player who's uh, <laughs> who does not have an ego. Yeah, very, very hard play. to find a good guitar player with no ego. That yeah, that that won't work. And only only if you pay pay the people. Exactly. You know, like, yeah. 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 Uh, uh, dollars for a gig, that, that then it would work, but n- not for free, <laughs> you know. Right. When you're, yeah. And so, yeah, we so we we skipped that, and and then we were back to two again, and then we started to record the album. And during that process, a, f- a friend of ours who who um who Sash the drummer played 
in his first band like 20 years uh, ago. He came by occasionally and he lent us his bass and he did some backing vocals on the demos and and it ended up that he was there every week when we were recording his stuff and then I don't know we, we we jammed, recorded together, and so it happened that we just, um, yeah, he, he got to come in the band like this. That's Holger. Huh? Yeah. That's, that's yeah. Holger. Okay. It developed naturally, you know? We didn't, right. like, ask, oh, do you want to join the band? So I know that was really cool because it was very relaxed, that process, you know? We just came came together and we did some, we recorded our stuff with and and we didn't even have the plan to record a new album. It was just like, come on, let's do some demos and right. see what happens. And then we went on and on and on and on. And then at some point we had twenty songs. <laughs> we said, okay. Hmm. So what okay. it says recorded at Woodhouse Studios. Is that your home studio or is that a real a regular uh, studio? No, oh, that's a regular studio where we recorded um, the last album and also the Space Brands album. Do you have to pay the guy? The guy you have to write the guy a check and pay him money for the studio time, right? Yeah, the the, the label we release our album. It's also from him and the. Uh, um, oh, so the, he gives you. Oh, so he gives you studio time then because you're on his label. If uh, if Holger wasn't there and I lived in Frankfurt, Germany, <laughs> would you have let me try out for for uh, Torpedo Head or would I or do I not look? The part? Do I look too uh, long-haired, curly-haired, or am I too old or sucky on bass? Answer that. <laughs> <laughs> that that's a good p point you're, you're talking about with the, do I look like that or do I look like that? We we found out through, through the whole process, it doesn't matter the fuck how you look like, you know, it has... There, there just has to be the chemistry. Answer the question, um, yeah. Sven Space Brain. Would you have let me try out or not? All right. <laughs> okay, but only you, you have to get short hair before you come, and you have to get a whole bunch of tattoos. Yeah. <laughs> so would you have? So would you have been open to me possibly playing bass for Torpedo Head? Or am I too old? Yeah. You. No, age doesn't matter in okay, rock and roll. Okay, so I would have been, you would have let me try out. Of course. You would have also found out that I can play, that when you're playing the solos, I can hold down the bottom end, man. <laughs> Holger, the new bass player, if you're listening to this, I have a plane ticket to Frankfurt ready to go, so you better be on your toes, my friend. <laughs> All right. Before you would have joined, I would ask you if your hearing is still okay. Not, not that we would have to get a, a different bass player who, who f fills out for the rest of the tour. You know. Oh my! Yeah. What you? I didn't hear what you said. I said we. I, yeah, I would have I, asked. I know. You if your I know what you said. I was making a joke. Get it? My hearing's not that good. <laughs> All right. You, you get the, you get the, the, the meaning. What I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Well, I I yeah. play loud and I I use well. Don't worry, don't worry, Holger. You're okay. I'm not going to Frankfurt, so. And I'm sure you're a better bass player than me, anyway. The wheelchair. I can do that. I can actually. I would prefer to sit on a throne that's about ten feet high with a bunch of guitar necks sticking out of it. Well, that was that would be so cool. That's like <laughs> Axel. Get it? I've seen that movie too. You saw the act. You saw the Guns and Roses uh, footage. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. What do you think of that? Um, I, I was wondering, did he do that on purpose? Did he break his foot on purpose so that he could sit in that stupid chair? No, I if if he if he uh, broke his foot a, at all, you know, <laughs> so he can oh. sing better. I don't know. All I know is he looks really silly in that chair. Yeah, it's it's a bit strange because you know it it, it was uh, a a one-off, pretty cool thing when the Foo Fighters did it because you haven't seen that before, but now to have the same chair, I don't know, it's a bit strange. Yeah. Well, when I saw Nazareth back in the '70s, uh, Dan McCafferty had a hurt leg and he sat in a bar stool in the very in the center of the stage, and he looked way it looked way cooler to me. I would I'd rather see Axel 
either walking around on crutches or sitting in a bar stool rather than in that stupid looking contraption that he's sitting in with his leg extended out and he's 10 feet higher than the rest of the band so you got to look so all the guys in the band had to look up at him uh, it's it's strange it's yeah strange. but but really i don't i don't really care about that reunion anyway i mean that yeah. really doesn't matter to me yeah me neither were you you were yeah. a guns and roses fan though right or were you yeah, I went when fan, you know, I, I have all 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 the records but I don't know, fan. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. I wasn't really a huge fan. I wasn't I didn't really like them back then even. I'm they're they're okay. I, they're good for what they did, but uh it wasn't my thing really. All right, you ready to do a track by track of the new new Torpedo Head album? Of course I am. All right. Tell us tell me anything about the album what first. What would you like people to uh to get from this album, good music first off. <laughs> uh -huh. Okay. <laughs> um, well, for for us, um, it's it's uh, it's really uh, the the best record so far, because the whole record, um, yeah, really came came together naturally, you know, no, um, and and we really took our time to record this record. As I said before, we had like 20 to 25 demos, then uh, which we had to choose from for the record. So yeah, so we, we had, had really stuff to sort out, and in, in, in the process before we went in the studio, so we really took our time on this. And yeah, the songs are really great. We it's a bit more diverse than the last record, and it's a bit more rocking, and yeah. Any of these songs about girls have, or, you know, yeah, about girls or relationships or anything like that? That's always in there. <laughs> you have the same girlfriend <laughs> as, you have same girlfriend as last album? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, but some, some songs, you know, you get, it's, it's, it's more, you, you, you hear that, that, um, theme more than in other songs, but there's, it's always like packed in. You can, there's some songs that have like you you can read more than one direction and yeah and other songs yeah what does your girlfriend think of this album do you play it for her as you were writing as you were uh, recording it and writing it yeah of course she, she liked it was, it's always a good uh, it's always a good in, in inspiration like telling me you know oh maybe you try that or that because she's she uh, listens with the, the just the ears of a listener, you know. So the first song on the album, can you hear me, Sven? Yeah, I can hear you. It is called Get Off My Back. Was somebody on your back, or is this in general? You want the man off your back, or what's the, what is this song about? That's a really simple, simple line, you know. It's just... Uh, just get off my back, motherfucker. Yes, we're doing our thing here, you know, and it's a, it's a it's a theme that everybody can relate to, you know. If it's someone at work or someone at school or whatever, just you're doing your thing, and come on, let, let me be. I don't I don't care. Listen, a little bit of "Get Off My Back." Here we go. So here we go. Up for the mark on the All right. What does that mean? What is that in English that the guy's saying? That's our that's our producer. <laughs> It's really hard to uh, to put that one to one in English because it's some some uh, just line. If you would like put it in English, it's like uh, give me a buck and mustard on the ceiling. <laughs> Doesn't make really okay, sense. Okay, well, what does it it's, mean though? Yeah, he has like when he's producing, he has these lines he always says, you know, and it stems a little bit from the place he's coming from. Um, the, the part of Germany where they have these lines you don't really get in other places and they sound a bit strange but it means like um, come on this is just this is put all your stuff by side this just kicks ass you know just let's let's go do this you know all right, that's, like, yeah that's, mustard that's, on yeah. the ceiling yeah <laughs> all right, okay okay <laughs> here uh, back, open. get off my back
right. I like that one. It's a good, um, a good riff. It's a kind of a little bit of an ACDC type riff. The da 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 da. A little riff, a little bit of a riff raff riff, maybe. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, just a straight ahead and, a, ca- and a catchy chorus. Yeah. Were you? How did you come up with that riff? Were you just jamming on the guitar, and or were you or were you playing a different song? No, not really. I was just. I, I think I was. I was uh, just strumming along, and then suddenly it was. Oh, that sounds good. Let's try it again. Oh, let's put it like that. And then go. Yeah, and it went on from there. Like, and let's put in a, a, a cool bridge and the chorus that sticks to your ear. So are we doing the Rock and Roll Geek scoring system on this, or are we just going to do it track by track? I don't know how, how you want to do it. Uh. Let's just, uh, yeah, I'll do a scoring system. Are you going to be okay if I give it a uh, two out? How many songs are on this album? Eleven. eleven. If, so I get, if I gave it a two out of eleven, would you be mad? Two out of eleven. <laughs> I have not heard the album yet, so I'm not saying I'm giving it a two album out of eleven. I'm just saying, would you be okay if I gave it a bad review? Oh, yeah, I'm not going to give I won't give it a bad review. A, you're my friend. <laughs> and B, I know you won't put out an album of, of crappy tunes. So, all right, I'm giving this one a plus one. I like the song. It's got a catchy chorus and a great riff. Great opening riff. Are you happy now, Sven? I'm super great. I couldn't. There you go. Better. All right. So the next song is called Wildfire, and on on the video, you asked me to. Uh, well, let me see if I can find the video on, on that you sent me. Uh, I want to play the audio from the video instead of the song yeah. Wildfire. You asked me to record uh, Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. It is October 27th, 1997. All right, let's mm-hmm. listen to the beginning of this first. I mean, I, hopefully there's no ad. Oh, It's Hard Rock Nights. Your host, Brian Basher, bringing you the absolutely positively without a doubt about working? it. Best yes. Hey, this is Greg Lonesome, and you're tuned in to the Rock and oh, Roll on. Manifesto. All right, well, I'm backing it up, backing it up here. Hold on, you can't, I can't really hear this too much. Backing it up. You got, you're, it's a guy spinning the dial on his car radio, but instead of DJs, you have podcasters doing the uh, DJ parts, right? Yeah, that's right. All right let's hear, let's hear the, let's see if we can recognize the podcasters in here. This is Hard Rock Nights, and I'm your host, Brian Basher, bringing you the absolutely, positively, without a doubt about it, best in rock and roll. Hard Rock Nights. I don't know that podcast. He is going a little bit over the top on the radio voice. He sounds like a DJ. Yeah. All right, next next guy. Hey, this is Greg Lonesome. He's a definite radio guy, sounding guy. What podcast is his? To the Rock and Roll Manifesto. Rock and Roll Manifesto. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, Greg Lonesome. Greg Lonesome. Greg Lonesome. Okay. Rock and Roll Manifesto. We got Hard Rock Nights and Rock and Roll Manifesto. <laughs> Welcome to the Rock and ah. Roll Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thank. Who doesn't fit? You go from two D. <laughs> Go from two radio sounding guys to this guy. I'm going to back it up here. <laughs> Welcome to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. My name's Michael Butler. Thanks a lot for joining me. I really appreciate it. Today is Monday, October 27th, 1997. All right, if I listened to that guy on the radio, I'd change the channel. What happened yeah, I, on... I, I, I wouldn't want what? I'm where I am. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> I, I, I would wonder um, if, if, I, if I had... Jumped into a chime time machine. Yeah. Oh well, that the date. Yeah, but I'm talking about the the quality of the radio voice. So what happened on October 27th, 1980, uh, 1997? I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out what. Uh, the song's called Wildfire. So the only thing that I can guess is maybe the Wild Hearts Earth Versus was released on that day. What happened on that day? Okay. Okay. I'll I'll explain. But it's really <laughs> geeky stuff. You said it was rock geeky stuff, though. um, Because I know the stock uh, market crashed on that day. Yeah, but the the thing that led to that date is that in the video, we are driving in a Corvette, which the listeners now can't see. So you have to go to YouTube and and check the video. I will will actually post the video actually on the show notes, too, on the rockandrollgeek.com of this episode. Go ahead. 
Cor Corvette the C5 that was produced in 1997. Okay. So <laughs> we just wanted to have a, a, a reference and. And it, it came to my head that the uh, Wild Hearts released the the Endless Nameless record. Oh, in, Endless in Nameless. Nice oh, okay. There you go. I was pretty close. Yeah. So it was uh, the release date of that album, and yeah. So and obviously the Wild Hearts, like me, the Wild Hearts. Uh, you're a big fan of Ginger and the Wild Hearts, obviously, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. All right. Let's see what other podcasters run this video. You're listening to Red Red Run on a Sunday. Does, is that how his podcast, is that how he talks on his podcast normally? Yeah. Really? The entire podcast? No, it, it's, it, it sounds really, um, I, I can't imagine myself for talking like that for two hours, but he, he, he pulls it through. <laughs> huh. Is it a good yeah. podcast? Yeah, they, all, all these podcasts, they, they, they play a mixture between, I don't know, like, like, uh, Re replacements and punk rock and 50s stuff and rock and roll yeah i that know i know the guy and i know of his podcast i'm just wondering if it, i've never listened because i don't listen to music podcasts but i don't know how you could do a show with that voice but okay if, if that's what he does it's fine I mean, who am i to talk okay who else who i'm your host jerry spinning some final jerry on the jukebox for you i'm a jukebox for you i'm here with sven I'm here with Space Brain from Torpedo Head. How you doing? Yeah. Sven? How you doing, Sven? I'm good. All right. <laughs> I couldn't do that for two fucking hours, man. It's a bit straining, yeah. All right. Next <laughs> have have listen to the next practice. podcaster here. You're listening to Tommy Unit Live, live out of New York City. And I so it goes from Hi, I'm there. Hey, I'm Tommy Unit. All right. Yeah. All right. What's his podcast called? Tommy Unit Live? Yeah. Okay. And if you're looking for that special sound, you know, the sound of a 70s rock. Does he talk like that on his podcast? Yeah. The entire time? Yeah. Huh. Part okay. Of it. All yeah. right. Okay. All right. Can roll tape blast into a 90s Stingray stereo all while blazing down the Audubon. Blade. Did you tell him what to say or did he say it off the cuff? Uh, a bit I li like like you I, I just uh, I send him some lines and then he put the rest around that oh, all right okay. you yeah. found it strap in and turn it all up. right we're gonna strap in and turn it up here all right here's wildfire okay I like that I'm always a fan of a little melodic uh, guitar intro I love that. The melodic intro keeps going over the root um, rhythm guitar. Always a fan of the pick slide. Cool. <laughs> very, very common thread in just about every single American Heartbreak song. Yeah. Which was the that only was thing that I knew how to write, pretty much. was uh, that I, I use that very often. Too often, but I love it. I like that. I like the three chords that are super catchy with the melodic thing going over it. And then a slight different chord change, which is great. And then followed by the breakdown. Yeah. That, my friends, is the perfect recipe for a great catchy hard rock tune right Sven or right space brain of course it is it is that's why you <laughs> uh, to me that's the perfect recipe and you and you did it great on this all right let, let's keep listening I like this as soon as I heard this a smile came to my face I like this, this is my type of music she said hey baby have you got what it takes I like this one a lot. I'm give this a big plus one. Are you okay with that, Sven? You okay? You're not mad at me or anything, right? 
<laughs> no. <laughs> okay. I like the first two songs I like. I love this song. This song I could listen to many times. You like this song, right? That's, that's my... Yeah, it's nearly my favorite on the record. I'm, I would imagine one. that your girlfriend probably thought this was a standout tune. <laughs> right? Of course. Because it's no, catchy. It's one, of my favorite songs. it's one of the it's a sing along and it's got a great riff. Every part of it is great. L listen a little bit yeah. more. She said, hey. A talk box. We did not yeah. hear. I'm gonna back it up so we can hear the talk box here. Nice. I'm a fan of the talk box. Yeah. I always wanted to put that on a record, and yeah, we thought it was time now to finally do it. You do not use the talk box in the music video. No, no, no. I, I thought it would look a bit too stupid. Okay. Because it doesn't, the, the riff doesn't come the whole, whole part. Right. Okay, I like the talk box. It adds a, it adds a good part. Listen a little bit more here. Hey baby, I think I wanna take Hey baby, I think I wanna need Come on, come on So it goes for, I like the little, the, the one chord that changes. Instead of going to the three, three chords box, you do the one set part that goes a little bit lower, which is like a half step, probably, no, two steps down, something like that, right? Very good ears. Yes, yes I like that. <laughs> it adds a little bit of a different flair to it. Yeah. Just, just one, one chord you do, but it, it changes a lot yeah. from the feeling also you get it you also makes it sound a lot less like a standard rock song and it may adds a little bit um changes it up i like that yeah. all right big plus one for wildfire Finn. i like that one Thanks. all right next song is called blood on wheels what's this one about is it running the guy over with that 97 corvette <laughs> no not, not at all it's um it's got more meanings to, to it. it's not like one meaning but um more of a music industry thing and also uh, media about um, yeah, the, whole, the whole process, the, the downhill side. Right. Maybe. Was your last out? Were your last albums on any labels? Did you have like a, a guy, a record label guy, or did you, or did, were they? Um, yeah, I guess we I'm have, saying, did you have to deal with record label people? No, we, we, we have a, a label that's uh, over our studio, which we do the, the digital release with, but all the other uh, things, uh, the physical uh, release and, and uh, selling and stuff and, and promo, and that's, we, we all do that by ourselves. Yeah. Did you ever have to deal with a, a, a label that was bullshit to deal with? We, I, we had to deal with, with ma management and things like that, so... Um, and that was pretty much pain in the back. So yeah. at one point yeah. we decided, no, it's better to do it by yourself. Um, also because it, at the time now we have the, all, all the record labels, they, they basically want you to pay for everything. You have to pay for the studio, for the record. and Yeah, why bother they, going with the record label? They're not, what are they going to do, get it in five stores for you? No. Yeah, uh, that's, that's the whole thing. And then... Then you get the on, only a shitty deal for the for the percentage of the CDs and everything and yeah so I mean in, in our day and age it's just like two clicks to get to an online shop and uh, you don't you don't need a, a record store you know they also want to take part of your T-shirt money yeah they want to take part of everything T-shirt money is everything do you make for you can't that's how, what's how you get gas to the next gig yeah. So that's that's the only way today to to earn a little bit money with with the merchandise and also now things with like that vinyl is like coming back again and a lot of people who are like into music you know they they want to have vinyl again that's that's a, a a thing where you can make a little bit of money with and if you do that via label 
you get like nothing for that. Is this coming uh, out on vinyl? Yeah, it's coming out on vinyl. It's the, the digital little download thing is coming out um, next week, and you can get it everywhere from iTunes to Amazon and all the other shops and the CDs and oh. vinyls. You can buy directly uh, via our uh, merch shop online, which is going. We got a new shop that's going on uh, online end of next week. All right, let's hear a little bit of Blood on Wheels. <laughs> Another little bit of little Malcolm Young uh, riffage. Catchy chorus. Yeah. Right? It's she's it, got blood on she's wheels. Got blood on wheels. Yeah, she's got blood on wheels. So she's a uh she's a good girl and she's tough and she doesn't take no shit. Is that what it what it means? Could also mean that. What does it mean? <laughs> there is no does it mean. It's always <laughs> what what do you think it means? Okay, That's well, what, what makes you, it interesting. <laughs> why don't you tell me what Sven Space Brain thinks it means to him? What it means to me? Yeah. Yeah, it could, that, that's what I was talking about. It's a bit the the bit of the thing with the, the record industry, and but it also has another turn to it. So you figure out what which one you like more. Okay. Is it the girl who, who's <laughs> who's got the, the razor shoes, or is it some some something else? I always try to leave that a bit to the listener. You like this song, I'm assuming, right? It's the third song. Usually the third song is the, is the one that um, whoever did the sequencing of the album thinks is the strongest track on the album. Everybody says something different on that. <laughs> for some it's the fifth, for some it's the second one. But the third one is important, yeah. But... Um, it's, uh, I have to point out, it's, it's, it's one of the, the, the songs where a drummer... Um, really does one, one his, his best drumming on. All right, really look. stuff he does there breaks and also the second verse it's got this uh, train train shuffle going on and it's really cool stuff. Right, let's listen to that part. <laughs> Yeah, I was gonna, I was gonna give it a half, but I like the, but now that you pointed out the drum part, I'm, I'm upping it to a plus one. Cool. All right, so You're gonna up it one more when you hear the, the middle part. <laughs> oh, okay, I'll get to the middle part then. She's all right. She's all right. Blood on wheels, crashing down the street. Blood on wheels, and the bed as we. Very important. It's got a sing-along chorus like the two previous two. That's that's very important, and that's what's always in in the us uh, in torpedo head tunes, right, Sven? Yeah, we like, like the riffing, riffing in the verse, and then you have like the, the uh, ca catchy sing-along in, in the chorus. Yeah, that's good. Tempo change. When you're caught in the web of life, whoa, whoa. sticking tight in the trap of the power block, nothing to strive for, hold tight, baby. All you need is a joke and a bone to crack the system of fate that she keeps installing. On and on and on. Yeah, baby. Yeah, I like the middle part. That's the best part of the song. I'm glad you told me. 
let, also, as yeah. you know, I have not heard this album yet because Finn just sent it to me yesterday, so I have not had a chance to listen to it yet. So we're listening to it cold. So I like that part. World exclusive. Yeah, world exclusive in my head, too. So I've never heard this. Our right, next song is called is en- Enough is Enough. What's, anything to say about this song, Sven? Yeah, we, we try to keep that, uh, the, the vocals really simple on that. Because, uh, like, like you just said, you know, like in, the, in the chorus, what, what we usually do is, uh, is that, that, that poppy sing-along with mostly two voices and really worked out. And we try to keep, that, keep the, the vocals and the backing vocals really simple on that. Just rock, rock and roll. No frills. All right. Enough is enough. Here we go. Here we go. Fade in, which is always good. To have a fourth song is a fade in. Mm-hmm. I like the melodic thing going over. It's a little bit of a minor key l- l- melodic thing, though. Right? Yeah. Yeah. A perfect right, a perfect wrong. There ain't no doubt about it. I'm guessing that you are probably a Backyard Babies fan too. A little bit of Backyard Babies influence, right? In this. Yeah, I like him. I'm I'm not a a huge fan, but but I like him. Yeah. What do you think of that last Backyard Babies album? I didn't like that. Yeah, it wasn't. I, I didn't think it was a good reunion album. It sounds a little too warped tour for me. Yeah, it had it had some some good songs on it, but it didn't have enough good songs yeah, for, exactly. uh, for me to buy it. This, this song here sounds like uh, a really good. So far, I've not heard it though. I'm only 29 seconds into it, but 29 seconds into it, it sounds like a really good backyard babies sounding song. You're doing right in the wrong crowd, but either way, you like it. My love and hate it. I'm guessing so far, I know you say uh, interpret what I want into it, but so far I'm interpreting, I'm interpreting um, the state of the music business sucks right now. Or the state of music, state of modern music, at least, at least popular music, sucks. Uh, not, not, not really popular music. It's a bit more, more into that. It's a bit of uh, also a take on, on this whole whole retro thing with I think is getting to a point where it's a bit getting a bit ridiculous because I have the feeling like for 10 years it's always the same the same the same the same nothing really changes like you know yeah it's enough is enough it's time to change yeah all right here we go More. Enough is enough. That more more talk box in the background. Yeah, yeah. That's just like a. Uh, is that just a open E chord? It's it's uh no it's it's uh it's like three three note it's it's go like dun 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 like a chromatic going up. Oh okay, I'm here already. Oh yeah, bada bada. Yeah okay. Salted names, a new industrial death race. Alright, enough is enough. Um, I like the song. I don't want to get if I if I give it a plus one, I'm afraid that this thing's gonna be eleven out of eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you have to keep your credibility. Yeah, I want to just to keep my rock credibility. Then I'm going to give it a half. Although I okay. like the song, I'm going to give it a half just so I can keep my rock credibility. Okay. Okay. The next song is called Angels. What's that, Sven? 
You're, you're lucky because there's uh, a lot of other good songs on the way. So. Thank God. <laughs> okay. All right. Next song's Angel City. Is it? A, what's that song about? Mm. I don't really know myself. You just called it Angel City. All right, let's listen. Almost a little bit leaning in the direction of Georgia Satellites, maybe. You're a, I'm yes. assuming you're a Dan Baird fan like me, right? Didn't we talk about Dan Baird lots of times? Probably so, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And that is, uh, I love that riff. The down, 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 down. It reminds me of something, but I can't put my finger on it, but I like it. I like the breakdown. I like. Uh, I'm giving that one a plus one, Sven. Angel Great. City. I like that. Next song is called Peace of Mind. You have to listen to that one till the end. I do. Okay. All right. Let's listen to it then. Ah, oh, ballad. A uh, little, uh, babe. I'm gonna leave you, Zeppelin. Maybe. Living life like a tumbleweed Rolling on Passing rocks at a ship in your soul On and on On and on Life goes on and Take some time with our company If you want peace of mind Take a dive in the depths of your soul and leave your bags behind. Take some time with our company if you want peace of mind. Keep on rolling on till you hit another rock. If you want peace of mind. Slide guitar. Yes. Open tuning, regular tuning. Um, a bit of both. So there's more than one slide guitar track, or, or part of the guitar is open, part is regular tuning. Um, I think I played that slide. That acoustic slide, I used the the open tuning, but only half of it. Not not like all the. I think the only the the, the e, e string, the upper E string, I, I tuned down. Rest is normal tuning. Oh, okay. That's a, that's an acoustic guitar on the slide. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do you? Uh, is he using like a filter or something? No, it's just uh, just recorded with a with a microphone. Huh. Okay. What kind of guitar is it? Uh, it's a Yamaha guitar. Okay. Flowing on, passing stream, bitch, chipping your soul. On and on.
Nice, a four minute, a four and a half minute epic. Yeah. I like that one. You like that one. You that's do. probably your one of you that's probably your favorite on the album, isn't it? The thing is, um we we didn't even uh, at first we, we, we thought we didn't want to put it on the album, but um before we went to recording we, we played the songs we, we we choose for for the album to to some some people and they were listening to it and like everybody was going oh how, how, that, that 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 song is cool that song is cool and all of a sudden we thought hmm maybe should we we should uh, try that one again and then record it so that's how it, it ended on the album and it turned out really great we really love it because it's a bit it's it's different from the other songs yeah it fits in Peter but it's something something else. All right, next song is called Not Too Late. Anything to say about this one? Um, starts off with a cool twin guitar intro thing. And you're playing both all of the all, obviously you're playing all the guitar parts. The, yeah, the, is the, you're you're a producer guy, the guy who runs the label. His name is Hagen. Hagen? That's uh that's a city where it is. His oh. guy his name is Siggy, Siggy. Oh, Siggy. Okay, that's right. Yeah, Siggy. Yeah. Does he play anything? Does he participate? Does he, uh, you know, sometimes a producer will like uh, throw in a piano part or something. He do, does he do anything like that on this record? No, he he's only doing the recording and here and there he he has ah come on you you tr try that there I have this little melody in my head you try that maybe in the, in the back of a uh, a chorus or something like that but. Mainly, the the songs are complete finished when we go to the studio, so there's not much doing anymore. It most of the time we have more than we record. Like we have, now we still have that backing vocal, and he goes, "Ah, oh, no, 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 <laughs> don't don't put that on." He has this voice, and he always goes like, "Ah, oh, no, 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 leave that out." <laughs> so yeah, we we end up uh, leaving more out than than we had planned. So. Right. Here's Not Too Late. Ah, uh, yeah. That's great. Little Lizzie, little, uh, yeah. Every time, there's a, every time there's a harmony solo part, everybody always says Thin Lizzie. You <laughs> yeah, okay no. with that? It's, it's okay, yeah. yeah. I mean, you could say Little Almond Brothers, I guess. A little Darkness, but... Whatever, it's great, great dual guitar. I'm gonna back it up and start over again. I like that. Oh yeah, see that's good. You continue. Starts off key. I was almost expecting it to change there, but it hasn't changed yet. I'm glad you didn't. I like that. The good. Uh, Good opening little riff, and it should stay there to me for a while. I always end up in a dead end street. Anywhere you go. And then to an anthem, um, anthem, anthemic verse. Yes. Back into the dual guitar part, which is a huge chorus. It's not too late to go. That is great, Sven. I love that. I'm serious. I love. That's my favorite song so far. I, I thought he would have say that. <laughs> All right. All right. Let's play a little bit more. I'm gonna zoom it past this verse and see if it gets to a solo.
break down <laughs> with a melodic mm-hmm. thing over it. And still on the chorus, though. It's a breakdown chorus with a new melodic part over it. Too late, too late. Gotta take it to a dance Too late. All right, I love that tune, Sven. Good job. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. <laughs> Next song is called Shanghai. Now, I've heard this song before. Did you say, have I played this one before on the show? Um, which one? The Shanghai. Shanghai. That, that name sounds very familiar. That, that's that. That the the only song we released. Um, I think it was two years ago already as a as a video, and then uh, we we put it on the record. Yeah. Okay. So you played it before. I thought so. All right. I played this one on the show before too. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And you liked it. Give it a. I'm sure I did. Everything you sent me, I've liked, so I, I know I liked it. Okay, let's hear a little bit of Shanghai. You get the action. Silent wings don't breathe. You give me reason. We've heard that one, so all right. I'm gonna give that one. I'm gonna give that one a zero. <laughs> zero. No, no I'm kidding. That's... I'm just seeing if you were listening, Sven. <laughs> I'm giving it a plus one. I like that one. <laughs> I, I, I paid you a hundred dollars up front. <laughs> How much did you pay you... me up front? Yeah, I paid you up front. Didn't you? Didn't you forget about it? Yeah, I did. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I was just seeing if you were listening because uh, I was hoping you were gonna say, "Oh, thank you." And thinking that I'd give it a plus one. No, I like that. I give it a plus one. Thank Drunk you. on Sunday. I've heard this one too, haven't I? Yes. That we um we 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 threw it out some month ago. That's right. I, first I, this was I record. this was I think I thought it was a world premiere on the Rock and Roll Geek Show, but I could be wrong. It could have been premiered on Red Red Wine Sunday. Am I wrong or right? It wasn't premiered on any uh, uh show. We just streamed it and um, they they uh, they they put it up all the our streaming link they put up on their website so, so it wasn't on any podcast except for the rock and roll geek show I played this didn't I yeah you played it yeah. okay there you go all right. that's that's all I wanted to hear <laughs> <laughs> okay drunk on Sunday <laughs> Oh, what's this song about? <laughs> oh, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm guessing it's about getting drunk on Sunday. Not, not really. Oh, that's, that's what you could think. But um, if if you listen to 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 the lyrics, you um, you get it uh, very fast. So right, I'm gonna try to figure it. Out. I'm gonna try to figure it out. <laughs> You're not really making any sense. Everything you're saying and doing, it's like you're drunk on Sunday, right? Every, everywhere you go, everything they say, you, you feel like you're drunk on Sunday. Okay. So that everything, means- you, everything you do, everywhere you go, feels like you're getting drunk on Sunday. 
That means uh, you're not making any sense. <laughs> it means I'm not well, making any sense. About it, it's you know when about uh, I don't know a, a part of our society being being really crazy and you can't figure that out. You no, know, if if you put on the news, you know what I'm talking about. And yeah, it's not making any sense. It. That's right. So I'm, I was right. Yeah, I'm right. See, I'm, okay, I'm right. Okay. But what happens if you get drunk on Sunday? It's all better. Huh? Everything's better. <laughs> Everything's better. <laughs> oh, that's a no, sin. Not, You're not supposed well, to get drunk on Sunday, are you? When you show up on work on Monday. Oh, you're hungover. <laughs> okay, right. Yeah, well, that's, I usually get drunk on Sunday, though. I haven't started drinking yet, either, because I haven't eaten anything yet today. Drive and buckle up and, you know, mow your lawn every day. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. <laughs> All right, next song is called Sweet Abai. I gave that one a plus one. Ah, I'm going to change it to a half. I like it, but I'm giving it a half so I can keep the rock credibility going. All right? Okay. I like Whatever it. you have. I'm giving it. All right, I'll change it to a plus one. All right. Next song is called Sweet Mystery. Sweet sure. Mystery. <laughs> Open tuned acoustic guitar, correct? Yes, but with a capo. With a capo. Okay, where on the capo? On the, um, let me guess here. I'm going to guess the capo's on the fifth fret. Uh, a little bit lower. <laughs> fourth fret. Yeah. Fourth fret, okay. Yes. If you said no, I was going to say third fret. <laughs> but only one guitar. The other is standard tuning. Huh, Okay. Back it up here. Back. Little like it's it makes a harkens to a little bit of uh, Rod Stewart because of the capo up there, yeah, which makes right. it sound a little like a mandolin. Yeah. So it's open tuning and capoed, right? Yeah, a lot of. On. <laughs> Let me tell you about this girl. She got a name tattooed in my brain. Oh. Mystery is what she's called She got me clean up the bathroom stall oh. mm -hmm. No, no, no Honey, I won't dance with you No, no, no Until you open the box Until you open the box Sweet mystery you show your secrets to me Sweet, sweet mystery Open the box for me Sweet mystery I want you to show your secrets It's got a weird hand. Is that a hand clap in the background? There's, there's a lot going on. So the there's like a... Is, yeah, there's more. <laughs> we, we wanted to put in a bongo like that. And the producer said, ah, no, 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 because he hates these, these normal percussion things. And he said to our drummer, okay, you, now you go upstairs into the kitchen and then you uh, pour out all the, the forks and knives and the spoon and you put that in your snare case and then you bring it back down and uh, you take a, a, a brush from the sink where you, where you clean the, 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 uh, the glasses and bring it down. And then it ended up with him uh, drumming on the the, the the bag for the bass drum, where the bass drum is in, with that brush. And then he used that for knives, forks, and spoon all in a box. And he always crashed them like, uh -huh. like, like uh -huh. an air sound. And on top of that, he was, yeah, he was doing the body percussions on, on his legs. Oh, it turned out really cool. cool. Yeah, yeah, something like that. Okay, yeah. okay, got it, got it. It's amazing. Open the box for me. 
All right, I like that one. Very, very creative and, and uh, catchy. A little, it's a little like a uh, song by this other band called, what the fuck was that band called? You know who I'm talking about? New band or old band? Old band. Da, 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 ba, 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 da, da, ba, 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 da, ba, da, da, uh, what the fuck were they called? I can't remember. It's a, it was a band that was that put out. Uh, starts with a C. I, I'll, it'll come to me. But I like it. I'm giving it a plus one. Okay, great. <laughs> By the way, so- that is a the, the lyrics to that song. There's like no big deep meanings in that. I think you can get it right away. Are you glad you did this interview with me, Sven? Or are you are you um, not too glad? I'm always glad doing a show with you. <laughs> All right. You sound like, you sound like uh, you're kind of mad at me. I hope you're not. I don't know why <laughs> no, you'd be mad. mad. So far, I got a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half out of nine, which is pretty damn good. That's good, yeah. I'll, I'll send you the check afterwards. <laughs> okay. I'll be waiting. All right. Next song is the <laughs> final song, Cesspool yeah. Dreams. Cesspool dreams. Uh, anything to say? Anything? Any deep meaning on this one? Cesspool dreams. Yes. That is a bit more deep meaning again. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's a. It's it's a bit of a tongue in cheek. Um, of 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 um, yeah. The, the the society going downhill. If you can put it like that one. In that All right. Here's ses- ses- right, here's ses- 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 cesspool dreams. Who's playing harmonica? Uh, the guy who played the second guitar for for us for for some time. So was this recorded a long time ago? No, that was recorded like two two years ago. Okay. We had like was three songs we recorded um, uh, two years ago, and and the rest of the songs we recorded um, yeah like was now with with the new session for the record. Oh, okay. So the ones that you, the, the ones that I've heard before, like um, Shanghai, that that has a second guitar player on it. Then. Yeah. No, no, no. It's it's all, all me. He only played the har- harmonica. Oh, okay. And on Shanghai uh, recording and on, and on that recording, I played all the guitars and and the bass. That was the we we went into the studio. It was only me and the drummer. After we we split up with our old bass player and recorded uh, like two or three songs. And then the rest of the, the the record we recorded now with the new lineup. All right, let's, I'm going to take it back from the beginning. Uh, They're riff rap, a little bit of riff raff riff, it's sort of. Yeah. I'm gonna give. I, I'm gonna, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you fine. I'm gonna give that one a half. I think that okay. if it was me, well, if it's me, here's. I think uh, the album closer should have been Sweet Mystery, and Cesspool Dreams should have been before Sweet Mystery. It's a decent song, but I'm gonna give it a half. A because I want to keep the rock credibility and not give this a near perfect score. B because it's probably the least. Uh, anthemic hook 
of the of the, all the songs on the album. Make sense? Yeah, of course. And we did it on purpose. We, if 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 we would have put the the acoustic song at the end, I don't know. It's like, oh, they got an acoustic song at the end. And a lot of times when you have an acoustic song at the end, it's always like, ah, uh, yeah, you can't. Of course, you can't skip. <laughs> but it's like ah, uh, that, that acoustic song on on the end, you know. It's, Okay, then I then I would have put then I would have switched Sweet Mystery with Peace of Mind, and I would have put Cesspool Dreams number ten, and I would have put Peace of Mind as the album closer. That probably makes more sense. Yeah, that's that's the cool thing of the d digital day and age. So you can put up the set list like you want to. At the end. Well, you could just tell me it's none of my correct. fucking business, and you do the album however way you want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Well, you can, so, also, you can also press shuffle when you're when you're going to work this week, and you put it the, the record on every morning. <laughs> so I'm telling this thing up now. We got one, two, three, four and a half, five, six, seven, eight, and a half. So we uh, got nine. So we're at nine out of ten is the score. No, wait a minute. Well, eleven. Hold on, I, I forgot the. Uh, where am I here? Okay, we got one here half so we're 10 out of 11 that's not bad i'd say uh, that's a pretty damn high score that sounds like a great record doesn't it yes it does <laughs> all right sven well i think you'd make a made a great record i'm, I'm sure you agree with me yeah we're perfectly happy as i said before it's like um for us it's the the, the best record we've done so far because from from top to bottom with the songs, but also with the artwork. Did you tell the the, the listeners uh, about the artwork? Let me pull, let me pull the artwork. Pull, pull I'm the looking artwork. at the the digital booklet that has the picture of the three guys, and it has the, the track listing and uh, who produced it. Backing vocals by Mike Zero, Slick, and Lazy. Uh, harp played Slick is or harp is done by Slick. So he's the rhythm guitar player from the other um, lineup. Yeah. And then the front album cover is just a just a gasoline can. Is that the front? Yeah, that's the front. And it doesn't say anything on it. No. I like yeah. that. I like that. And it's yellow and black. With same tone yeah. of yellow as the Joan Jett album called Album. Yeah. Same exact yellow, exactly. which is great. And a very yeah. bright red gas can with black duct tape on it. Yeah, we, we wanted to have a cover, you know, that also works. And it fits with the Camaro car, because you put this in the trunk of the, of the um, Camaro. Oh, yeah, in, in the video, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, we wanted to have a cover, you know, that stands all, also on its own without being a cover for, for a rack album. You know? Yeah, I like you that, too. Put it on, on the wall for, like, an artwork, like, like the old um, hypnosis, hypnosis cover. Hypnosis, you know? that's <laughs> right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, we wanted to have something like that, you know, which sticks out and that you, you don't really see right away, oh, that's a hard rock band, or that's a metal band, or that's punk rock, which so many cases you see right away, oh, that's that, and you always see it from the logo. We wanted to have something, you know, that stands on, on its own, but in, in some sense looks like rock and roll makes sense. It's like, a great, it's a great album cover. It's, it's a, it can, you can hang this, you can frame it and hang it on your wall. I agree with you there. The gas can is red, and, and uh, where is this gas can from? Is it somebody's gas can in their car? Or did you buy it specifically for the cover or what? Okay, we, I, I had it and and, and I, I saw that the totally crashed up gas gas can somewhere, and I thought, now oh, that that would look cool. But normally those are only like in olive green. And, but we wanted to have something bright, and then, yeah, we bought uh, one, a, a new one, and we trashed it up, and it looked that way. And uh, I was going to ask yeah, you, because uh, it's all scratched up. I was going to wonder, did you drag it behind the car and drive it for a while? Yeah. We, we, we hit it on the floor, and we got a small video. We might post that on, on, on our uh, homepage uh, sometime where we <laughs> trashed that thing. And, yeah, then we went into the studio of our photo. Uh, photographer Sven Sven Winkel, who does all our, our pictures, and we put it in front of a yellow uh, wall, and uh, he, he did great shots of it. By the way, completely done uh, with analog film, 
So. Oh, very nice. That, it's very, very yeah, nice well, lighting. Do me, hey, will you do me yeah. a favor, man? Yeah. And I will pay you for it. Just, will you please send me the vinyl when it comes out? Yeah, of course. I'm. I'm also very, very anxious to see that um, in in that big size from from vinyl. How that looks like. Yes, because I Thank would you. like to hang this vinyl on my wall. Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah. Of course. Be happy to send you one. All right. Thanks, yeah. man. And there's there's two promo pictures too. Are those on the back of the album, or are they inside the booklet? Um, they're in. When you take the the the, the record out, there's an extra sleeve where where the picture is on. And it has you holding that guitar, which is a what? What does that kind of guitar is that? It's a homely it's a guess. Uh, German it, guitar. It's, what uh, is it? Framus. Framus. Okay, Framus. Yeah. It's an old brand from the way back when the when the Beatles had, I think, they had bass from Framus, and then it went um, the uh, went downhill. The company, and like in the nineties, they the, the company Warwick, you know, that does these. That's bases, right, Warwick, they, right? They revived the company, and um, yeah, they've been producing guitars ever since now, like for twenty years. I bought that guitar, I don't know, fifteen, I think, no, even long, sixteen or seventy years ago. So I'm, I'm only using that guitar. And you're wearing black sunglasses. Yeah. And the and the dr the bass player has his foot on the scratched up um, gas can. Yeah. And, there's, and then there's one more promo picture. Let me pull it back up. Where is it? I lost my oh fuck! I lost my spot here. Ugh. Hold on a second. <laughs> I'm waiting. And there's one more, one more. There's another promo picture that's black and white of you guys. Is that on the inside of it too? You mean the the one with the with the three pictures? Uh, there's a black. You are in sunglasses. Drummer's got his arms crossed, and the bass player's got his hands in his pocket. Yeah, that's a, that's the one that's um and, and now the one with the canister. That one is in in the record, and on the back side are these other three. Uh, okay. Pictures, by the way, which is also a really cool thing. These are um, done with a with a really with a huge Polaroid camera. Camera, yeah. you know, not the normal size Polaroid, but big, like like a Dina. I don't know how it's called in English. In German, we say Dina Vier. You know, the normal copy copy size when right. you copy pictures. Those those photographs are that size, but Polaroid. All st really all done by somebody named Swen Winkle. Yeah, he's a really cool guy. Swen. I've he's never heard that word Swen before. That's I don't know, yeah. Some some guy it sounds like that. But the Swen, other guy, I guess it's short for Swenson, maybe. <laughs> yeah. But the other guy he's he's got a V. Yeah, Sven, that's you. Yeah. All right, Sven. Thank you for coming on. It was a, a another quality album. Thank you for uh letting me do it with you. Thank you for, for having us. It's always, always cool to come on the show and also to listen to your show. You still listen? Yeah, I, I listen to a lot of podcasts. I, I noticed because, that. Because uh, it's, uh, it's really inspiring stuff. You know, they, there's, you get to listen to a lot of tunes, which maybe some you, you would never find. And because um, all, all of these podcasts we put on, they they really have a cool uh, diversity of, of of music. And who has and the best podcast of all the podcasts you listen to? Who's your favorite podcast of all the podcasts you listen to? Of course, it's Michael Butler. All right, I will not change my score of the album. Then I'll keep it at ten or eleven. Thank you very much. I was, I was prepared to I was prepared to lower my score. Yeah, but and it was good that you also sent me a check over. Exactly. To, to put, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So we're even. <laughs> So in the end, nobody gets money because Exa I said yes. check and you check. <laughs> right. <laughs> All right, Sven. Thank you so much. I'm, I appreciate you coming on. Quality out. In all seriousness, I'm joking around, but in all seriousness, it is a really good, hard rock, catchy as hell album, and you did a great job, Sven. As I've told you many times, when I first saw, when I saw Space Brains, and the entire band, we said, wow, you guys are really good. Your songs are catchy. And I'm not, I wasn't lying to you then, and I'm not lying to you now, Sven, as you well know. I also have to point out because of, of all this uh, things you just said, you're you're one of the only only persons I've I've met you know in in 
in, in this whole rock thing that, that I've, I've really stuck for in s such a long time with all, all the bands, bands we play it off. It's a really cool thing, you know. Kind of like 10, 11 years ago when we played together, it's not like we did like 50 tours in between. It's really cool. It doesn't happen that often in the whole rock and roll because there's so much, there's also a lot of bullshit competition going on. It's always, we're the big, better band than you guys. Man. A lot of that always going on. Yeah, our band was never like that. And if a band's great, I will tell them they're great. So. Also, I have to point out big thing, thanks to the listeners of the Rock and Roll Geek Show because there are a lot of, a lot of, uh, People who, who bought our last album because of the, the show we did together, and and there's uh, now they're all writing uh, on on Facebook. Oh, we're gonna get the new record oh, when good. it comes out, and we're looking forward to hearing the show. And that's also a really cool. Oh, thing. good, that's great to hear. And if you like these face these uh, torpedo head songs, go out and buy the record. It's coming out this week. Buy it, friends. It's it is well worth your money, and it's a reasonable price. And Sven, like most independent artists, uh, really could use the bread. And these albums, ain't, yes. they ain't free to make, friends. Buy a, mm -hmm. buy a T-shirt at their show. Go to the show. If you're going to steal, the, like I say to everybody, if you're going to steal the album, which I hope you won't, buy a T-shirt from Torpedo Head. Yes. And please make sure you tell Sven you heard him on the Rock and Roll Geek Show so he doesn't feel like he wasted his entire Sunday on this bullshit show. <laughs> I would appreciate it, friends. All right, Sven, thank you so much for coming on. My, my daughter's texting me. She's really pissed off at me now. <laughs> one, okay. more, one more question. Who do you think should have been the new lead singer of ACDC? I think they should, they, they should have just uh, uh, closed up. the book. I think Angus Young should have released a, a, a blues album. That yeah. would have been really cool. Because that would have been really fitting and... Um, instead of this, this lineup, no. I don't think that's cool. No, I don't either. But they can do what they want. I think it should have been Angry Anderson, like I've said, but a blues album would have also been nice to hear, too. But he's not dead yet. It might still happen. Yeah. Anyway, we got uh, enough great ACDC albums to listen to. Yeah. So. Unfortunately, they put the nail in the coffin without Axel in the band, in my opinion. They put what? The nail in the coffin with Axel in the band. <laughs> Even though he's not a member of the band, he's just doing ten shows. But still, yeah, we'll we'll see what will happen. Yeah. All right, Sven. Yeah. Thank you for coming on, friend. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me, Michael. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Uh, all right. Bye. Oh, one more thing. You, that? you there, Sven? Yeah, I'm still there. I'm going to close out with a song by another band, and I'm going to let you pick that song. Well, you pick the song. I am picking the song. <laughs> What do I want to hear? How about some Georgia Satellites? What song? I don't know. You pick the song. <laughs> okay, I will pick the song. I will do it like an album closer. How about that? I'm going to do It's All Over But The Crying. That's not Georgia Satellites. That's yeah, it is. Here, but that's good too. No, it's oh, no. on, no, it's on yeah. Land of Salvation and Sin. Yeah, I know. I know. I, know. I, I, I think I've heard it too, too, too much from him. Playing, playing solo at his shows. Would you like a different stuff. tune? Yeah. A different tune then? No, no, no it's a, it's a, I love that tune from from the third album, right? Uh, from in the from land like, of salvation and sin. I'm not yeah, sure if that's yeah. it. I think of course, it's I love that. Last album they did on the major label. All right, thank you so much, Sven. We'll talk to you next time, friend. Okay, bye. Bye. All right, there you go, my good friend Sven <laughs> Space Brain from Torpedo Head. Seriously, friends, go out and buy the album. He needs the money, and it's well worth it. The songs are fucking great. You heard them. I really, truly think they are great, catchy tunes. All right, here's Georgia Satellites. It's all over but the crying. We'll talk to you next time. You can find me on the Facebook, r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram. Wait a minute. Find me on the Twitter, r and Geek. Find me on the Instagram, Rock and Roll Geek. Don't ask. Area code 706-621-ROCK. That's area code 706-621-7625. Find this show at rockandrollgeek.com. And thank you, everybody who donated to the show. Please keep the donations coming. I will say all your names on the next episode, I promise. Without your donations, this show would die a horrible, putrid, stench-filled death. Here's the Georgia Satellites. We'll talk to you next time, friends.
This time it isn't me And it doesn't take 2020 To see what I can see Sit right over here and listen Hey, you just go right ahead, little girl Oh, you got my undivided attention Ah, but I've been listening What you tell me with your eyes about it later You can tell yourself it served me right You painted a picture I can't forget You laid it out in black and white Don't tell me nothing It's a rock and roll geek train wreck. This is Space Brain. Holger.
Ernsthaft. <lacht> <lacht> Scheiße. And nee, we are Torpedo Head. Fuck you. And we're drunk. <lacht> fuck the fucking fuck. Fuck the record. Fuck the people. This is Space Brain. Holger. And Sash. We are Torpedo Head. And you are listening to the Rock and Roll Geek Show. With your host, Michael Butler. Yeah!